What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. Hopefully, you've been doing great since the last episode. If you're loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. You can also subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. If you're really loving the show, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. We always love to hear your feedback. And if you haven't followed me yet on social media, you can at the official Justin Ford. Again, at the official Justin Ford. You can follow me here on YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Got another great episode in store for you today. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they lived next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in 23 states and has a team of over 100 professional loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888 888- Eight eight five three six six seven, or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Well, I've got Joy Ford back in the studio. Hey. Real run uncut. Yes, it is. How you doing? Good. Yeah, good to see you again. Yes, always good always to see, good to see you, you and that awesome hair. Looks pretty good today, actually. Did you, did you do extra? Like I did a little drying? bit different today, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Actually, your collar needs to be fixed there. Oh, I forgot to help you there. Jeez, gosh darn it. <laughs> it's okay. All right, we're good. <laughs> well, another episode in store. And mm. I think this is, you know, we like when we get questions from people, mm. you know, and, and this one's actually pretty interesting. You know, we, uh, you know, when we do the show, we, we, you know, a lot of times talk about real estate. We talk about life. We talk about family. You know, we talk a couple episodes ago, Joy's feet in the sand. She likes the summer and we're like right in the middle of the summer. Yes. Yep. Summer's great. And uh, the question here that that I've got written down. Johnny. Yeah, from Johnny is, what's the meaning of life? The purpose of life. The purpose of life or meaning of life. Yeah. That's a big question. It's a deep question. And we actually are, I need you to start that one off because I had to think about that. Not too hard, actually, I think. Yeah. But still. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. And I'll tie actually something into this that I've recently been doing is researching Ancestry.com to, oh you know, to look back on. Obsessed, obsessed, I have been pretty obsessively obsessed with it. doing it. Yeah. Here's my great, 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 great grandpa. My kids are like, the bones are in the ground. I can, who cares who the great times five is <laughs> going on here? But you know what? I've been able to trace family back to the 1500s, which is over 500 years ago, which is insane. And for me, it's actually been getting me to think a lot about life, actually. So it's yeah. pretty cool that this is the question that we've received. Right. Because, you know, when you think about like when you're born, you have a mom and a dad, right? And then your mom and dad have a mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, like when you can open this thing up on Ancestry.com and you can go back 500 years, it looks like the biggest pyramid scheme ever. <laughs> Seriously. Some of the hair dudes, Justin was like, hey, he looks like Count, Count Dracula. Yeah, one of my great, I think my seventh grade grandpa looked like pretty, Count Dracula. Their hair and their smile, they didn't have a smile. They were Never straight s- face. Nobody smiled back I then. I guess it wasn't allowed or maybe they were so sad about life i don't know i don't they didn't know. have joy i don't think i don't even know some of their pictures just i have joy so sad i, I know but Ford. that's part of that's actually i was thinking meaning of life or the purpose of life is part always of finding joy for me i find you every day i know <laughs> um but no finding so, joy in all that we do but, but, every but when we day. think about life mm-hmm. right i think that we never really think about what's the meaning of life because we didn't choose to be born Right. Right. So we're born. And then, you know, obviously when we're kids, we're not really thinking about life. But then when you become an adult, I think there is a point where everybody, 
gets to and says, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? They call it a midlife crisis too. No, I don't even think a midlife crisis. I'm just (laughs) saying, I think people think what's the purpose of me being here? Mm -hmm. What's, what's the purpose of life, right? Or what's the meaning of life? And the thing that really blows me away. And again, we don't think a lot of times beyond where we are. And when I started doing this ancestry.com thing, it really got me thinking how many people it really took to, to, to create me. Right. And yeah, you and everybody else that's listening, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you think like it took so many different people to be born for you to be here right now. And we don't think that way because we think maybe of our parents and our grandparents and maybe we have some memories of our great grandparents when we were little, right. but we never think anything beyond that unless you're a part of a family who has a very strong heritage of where they think back to, hey, great, great, great grandpa Johnny was just the greatest ever and this and that and like where really like it's taught, it. you yeah. know what I mean, into families. And I, I ask some of my you know, my parents are like, they don't, they don't know. Right. And I yeah, think, so you know, even when we asked your mom, she's even, like, yeah. I don't remember my grandparents. Right. Like it's, it's, it's kind of strange that we don't think beyond that. But when you think of the meaning of life, you realize how little you really are and how small you are in the bigger picture of things. Mm-hmm. And that really blew me away when I started to see all of these people who, you know, were responsible for me being here. And even tracing you, I mean, we, we, we look back into the 1700s of your Filipino, you know, lineage where we see all these, you know, Filipino family members all the way back to the Philippines, which is so cool. From France or something, right? No. My grandma, remember? No. Well, they came in, you know, because they, they, yeah, they came here, you know, from but, from, but from the Philippines. They were all in oh, the yeah. Philippines, yeah. And so the meaning of life, uh, you know, I think that everybody gets to a point where they question the meaning of life. Right. Mm -hmm. We look at, you know, why am I here? What's the meaning of life? And what's this all about? And I think sadly, unfortunately, many people go through life and die never discovering what the true meaning of life is. So what is the true meaning of life? I'll tell you what I think it is. And I'd love to hear what you think it is. Uh, Yeah, I think the meaning of life, first and foremost, is to get to know your creator. Mm-hmm. I think first and foremost, you know, God created us for a reason. And even there's many people who don't believe in God. And I think yeah. it takes more faith to not believe in God and think this all happened by accident than to think that there was a creator who created it. Because if you look at everything on, on planet earth, everything was created, mm-hmm. right? This glass was created. This microphone was created. You know, the shirt was created. This phone was created. Like everything had a creator. So right. why wouldn't, Inventor. why wouldn't life have right. a creator? Mm-hmm. And even when you look at the human anatomy and the body of a human being, there's no way that a body, a human being could be formed by accident on how accurate and perfect it really is. Mm-hmm. Right. When you think of, you know, even reproduction, right. There's a male and a female who have parts that come together that cr- recreate. And then a, a woman carries a baby inside her womb that grows and it's connected to an umbilical cord where the baby is fed. And then the baby comes out and then a mom's breasts fill up with milk to where then these babies could be, you know, fed. It's like that doesn't accidentally happen. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think first and foremost, the meaning of life is to get to know your creator. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because I don't think you can really discover the meaning of life and what the purpose of life is until you know the one that created you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And I remember when I was 13, 14 years old, and I think I talked about this many episodes ago, I was probably 15, where I was sitting there, and I remember... Thinking that question? I was sitting on my... I I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting at where me and my dad lived in Taylor at our apartment. I was sitting on the front little patio in the chair, looking and just feeling a certain way, and just like, I feel empty, I feel lost, and I have no idea what life is about. Like, there's Mm -hmm. got to be more than this. And I really, really felt that way, which was interesting because I was 15. Wow. And so, you know, when I became a Christian at 19, you know, when I got saved and accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that changed everything. And then I began to see for me that the meaning of life is to know your creator and to and to really help inspire other people to find that relationship as well with God. That's that I think that's the I meaning agree. Of life. No, it is the meaning of life. That is that is the number one thing that yeah. I I'm totally in agreement about that is 
we is knowing who's created you right. and understanding that. And, and, and I feel like a big part of life is like serving each other. I was going to say that too. Yeah. Serving one another. Yeah. You know, meeting people's Humanity, needs. Yeah. yeah. Like how can we help better someone and help somebody or, yeah. you know, whether it's time, money, you know, all of that, all of that's yeah. important. So yeah. whether you can help meet someone's need financially and if you can't do that, meet, there we th- help them with in, as far as time goes yeah like giving some time like you yeah. know time bettering each other bettering you know yeah. enriching it, each other absolutely and i think that life when it's self-centered is meaningless Amen. when it's all about you right. and it's all about what you can accomplish and what you can do for yourself is meaningless but when you can use like what you just said the gifts and the talents the resources you know your time to help other people we've been programmed as humans to automatically feel great when we're helping other people. Like Mm -hmm. when you help somebody else, when you help meet somebody else's need, when you come along somebody side, somebody and and make a difference in somebody else's life. To me, that's the greatest feeling, you know, and, and, and not just knowing. And and so you don't even think about doing it to get that feeling. It's not even like about that. It's about hearing somebody's story or hearing somebody's need and like wanting to meet it just naturally wanting to, to help them in whatever way that looks like. Yeah. And it's rewarding, yep. you know, internally finding joy, having joy, yeah. like, you know, re- reviving joy within you Yeah. by lending a hand. Yep. Whatever that way that looks. Yeah. You know, it was interesting, you know, Jeff, Jeff Glover, you know, had a, uh, we were having a conversation about me doing the live unreal formula, which I uh, recently did at the Glover you retreat. Mm-hmm. And, before I did it, because last last time I did it in, in January, you know, my story is a story of redemption from brokenness. And what Jeff challenged me and said is not everybody is broken. How can you also reach the people who are not broken, right? People who have, let's say, grown up and had a great childhood, right. had a great upbringing, didn't really experience brokenness, didn't have a background of hardship. How do you reach people like that as well? And so sometimes I think that it's maybe hard for somebody who has everything and life is pretty good because not everybody's miserable and depressed and upset to, to, to think and realize, or maybe even be told that the meaning of life is to know God and to have a relationship with him because some people think that they don't need God because they have everything already. Right. But I, I feel at some point in life, everybody is going to feel broken. I believe that it doesn't matter if you're two, if you're 12, if you're 20, if you're 80, I mean, I'm one of my great friends, um, dad just lost his wife and he's 80 years old, broken at 80. Like he, great life, wealthy, wealthy, successful. Yes. All of that lost his wife. And now he's broken. And like, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter if you have everything. Yeah. You can have everything and everything can be great for so long, but at some point in life, you're going to go against something that's going to break you Yeah, or you're going to feel broken. And and the good thing is, so. is the gentleman we're talking about knows his creator has yeah. a relationship with the Lord so. and he knows where to turn even in the times of brokenness where there's so many people who experience brokenness, maybe mm-hmm. even are experiencing brokenness right now and they don't, they don't know where to turn. Right. Whereas for us who have a relationship with the Lord and have found that, that meaning of life, We're all going to experience hard times. We're all going to experience, you know, difficulties. But where do you turn to in your time of brokenness? Yeah. And having hope in Christ. Right. You know, hoping in Christ. I'm not having no idea or having no hope, but always having hope. Absolutely. And so, so yeah, I mean, this, this wasn't going to be a real deep episode. It wasn't going to be a long episode, but you know, when we get questions like this, I think it's important to really share our opinion because this might not be the opinion of, of you that might be listening, but yeah. I can assure you of this, that if you're going through life right now and you're feeling a sense of brokenness or you don't feel like life really has any meaning or you're really just, just trying to find out why you were created and what your purpose was, seek the Lord, mm-hmm. ask God to reveal himself to you as creator, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So that you can find your purpose and why you were created. And here's what I always say about uh, having a relationship with the Lord. If you don't currently have one, if he's not real, because some people don't believe he's real, mm-hmm. what do you what do you lose if you decide to try to have a relationship with the Lord and find out or, or don't experience anything and he's not real? You just go back to being with the way you are right now. Right. But what if he is real? Mm-hmm. Right. And and what if what if you can find your meaning and your purpose by having a relationship with the Lord? What if it changes everything? Right. And it's exactly what you were looking for. Amen. That's deep, right? Yeah, that's a good one. That is good. It's true truth. So set you free. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Well, guys, that's it. We just wanted to share our, uh, you know, our thoughts and our opinion on what we believe the meaning of life is. And again, if you don't have a relationship uh, with God and you've never really gone down that path, I encourage you to, to ask God if he's real. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. And if you do those things, you may find exactly what you're looking for. And so, again, we thank you for tuning in to another episode. This episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Again, Nextdoor Lending is not just a sponsor on the show. It's our personal lender. We send all of our buyers over to Nextdoor Lending. They have the best rates, the best terms, and the best customer service. Over 600 five-star reviews at A+, Perfect Better Business Bureau rating. Give my friends a call over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you think the meaning of life is to you. There's no judgment. We may believe different, but we'd love to hear what you feel your meaning of life is. Feel free to leave it in the comment section. Feel free to send us an email, justin at justinfordunleashed.com. Feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate you tuning in. You can also find us on social media at the official Justin Ford. You can follow Joy Ford or The Real Raw and Uncut page. Two things we always like to leave you with. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God, all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. (music) 